Um, welcome everybody. My mm. name is Pratik. I'm one of the advisory board at Bridge India. Uh, some of you may be familiar. It's a think tank with its first office in London and a couple of more offices in Europe coming up later this year. Uh, if COVID finishes soon, otherwise uh, later on beyond that. Um, we're about a year and a half old. So we're a registered charity, a non-profit in the UK. And the aim is to help India watchers, the Indian diaspora, uh, better understand uh, all the nuances of India from a policy perspective, uh, both in, in the UK and Europe. Uh, our board is made up of former Secretary General of, of FICI, the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. We've got other people who run businesses uh, in, in the UK, in Germany and, and elsewhere. And uh, we're a membership organization, so under normal times, we used to have two or three member events uh, every month. And under COVID times in the last two and a half months, we've had, now I think this is our 15th webinar in the last two and a half months, we've had about 75 uh, or so speakers. Uh, we've got uh, our next session next week on India's foreign policy, which has a former foreign secretary of India, uh, a former uh, foreign minister from the Maldives, and uh, sitting MPs from India there as well. So I'm absolutely delighted to be hosting this session on, on cultural diplomacy and soft power. Um, uh, and I'm really glad Mira could join us because Mira was on a similar session we did about a year ago at King's College in person. And this is a nice kind of follow up to that. Um, and I'm glad to see Dinesh Patnaik online as well. I think some of my fondest memories at, uh, in terms of engagement with the Indian High Commission in London were under his, his time. Um, and I, I'm also told that it's Arunima's birthday today. And my notes tell me it is her 25th birthday. So happy 25th birthday, Arunima. Uh, delighted to, to have you. And <laughs> with that introduction, I'll hand over to Spriya for the rest of the session. Thank you, Pratik. Uh, this is such, a, such an interesting panel to host. This is not what I do in my day-to-day -day work life. So it's very nice to actually get out of business and financial journalism for a bit and talk about something which is much more fun. Um, we are in very interesting times. India is also a country that's very rich in culture and it has left no stone unturned when it comes to taking this to the rest of the world, whether it's through outreach programs, whether it's through cultural centers abroad with private players. We've made sure that you know, we've, we've managed to flag that cultural um, diplomacy in every country outside. But something happened earlier this year. Something happened that's not a surprise to us. Um, and it threw everything up in the air. We started seeing governments, we started seeing companies, corporates, individuals, suddenly having to uh, grapple with a new reality. Um, and they started to think, oh, how can I change myself? How can I recalibrate my strategy and still remain uh, relevant? So it threw us in a situation where we all went back to the drawing board, each one of us. Uh, no matter how uh, successful we were in our careers, no matter how rich these countries were or how poor these countries were, everyone was back on the drawing board. A few years, a few weeks ago, I was hosting a panel where I said that the world has brought us all together and we are, you know, the whole concept of Vasudev Kutumbakam, where we all become one big family and uh, we are all in the same boat. But one of the panelists rightly said that we may be in the same storm, but we are all in different boats. And that's very very true a situation like where we are today. Um, you know, you see that this particular pandemic has brought out the strengths and the weaknesses of every individual, every uh, industry, every country, um, starting from the most developed countries like the US um, that are struggling to control the pandemic of this nature to very, very um, sort of weaker countries where we see that they are putting livelihood before lives model, which is really sad. So without further ado, I want to welcome our panelists today and I want to pick their brains on how, and so the, our panelists today actually to talk about it, they're all from the same industry, but they represent different facets of this industry. So it'd be very interesting to actually hear from individually from them, how the, this whole pandemic has played into their lives, into their professional lives, and how they think that India still continues to uh, you know, um, make this cultural diplomacy efforts uh, relevant in today's context and what has been done um, in, the, in, the, in the last four months and what more can be done. So for the introductory remarks, I would like our panelists to stick to two minutes each. I know it's not uh, enough, but we'll go on with more and more questions and we'll have a lot more ground to cover. This topic is also very close to my heart and I'll talk about why it is so later on in the uh, discussion. 
But let me uh, introduce our panelists. And as I call out your name, if you're able to just wave to the audiences. So Dinesh Patnaik, Director General, Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Amish Tripathi, Director, Nehru Center, and author of the Shiva Trilogy. Sangeeta Bahadur, Indian Ambassador to Belarus, author of the Kal Trilogy. Meera Kaushik, OBE, founder, Munch UK, founder, director, former director, Academy. And Arunima Kumar, Kuchipuri dancer, teacher, and choreographer. Welcome everyone. Uh, it's, uh, this is, it's really nice to have you all in this panel today. It's a dream come true. Um, I want to start with Dinesh Patnaik um, and I want to bring you in to understand how do you think, um, you know, ICCR is at, is at the helm of culture in India. How do you think this, pa this pandemic has, uh, the, the challenges it has posed and how quickly were you able to adapt to something like this? Thank you, Spriya. No, it's, it's good you asked this question because it's taken us some time to adjust to the new reality. Uh, we had a whole host of events we had planned for the year. And as you know, March is the time when we start planning for the whole new year. I even started from April and we had to put everything to a standstill because of COVID. But it also gave us time to think of what we can do better. What can we do in a different format? And the online format is the one which has now become the norm the gears wherever you are. People have started using this format to reach out to people, to start doing the activities that they're supposed to do offline, to do it online. And this is happening everywhere. But that's not the important part because ultimately whatever happens, both online and offline will have to exist together for culture or cultural diplomacy to work. But it's very important to find out what is it that we're looking at. Culture has two aspects to it. One aspect is of course the industry aspect. You called it an industry. You said we are all of the same industry. Moment you call it industry, then it comes down to jobs and livelihoods and people. And the creative industries actually encompass the largest industry in every country in the world. People don't see it because it's an industry which is hidden behind that they have no unions, they have no system of putting things together. But there are millions of artists, artisans who are actually eking out a daily livelihood from working in this cultural and creative industries. And they are at risk today, all of them, whether it is in developed countries or developing countries, because you need somebody to help you perform on a regular basis. And when people are afraid to go to public places and to gather together, the entire concept of creative industries goes for a six, whether it is movie halls, theater, just performances in a village, in a town, in cities, wherever it's gone. But the other pack part about culture is that culture is part of life itself. I mean, what do you do without culture? Culture gives you the distinction between whether you're existing or you're living. You can just exist, but if you have to live, you need culture. And for that, it is very important that we make all our efforts to bring culture back into people's lives. And whether we do it through cultural diplomacy or through having government spend or doing whatever we need to do, but we need to bring culture back into people's life. Because at this moment, people are hooked to online movies and shows, but there will come a time when there will be enough of that. And you'll have to give them an opportunity. There'll be a whole generation lost who would not have learned what is culture of different countries. It's not just us. If we do not make efforts to bring encapsulated culture together, and make, take it to people, we will be doing a injustice to people. So that's just opening remarks. We will take it as we go. Thank you, Spriya. Thank you, Dinesh. I want to move on to Sangeeta now. Um, Sangeeta, you're in a very different uh, situation. Um, you know, you are in a country where uh, diaspora is not very rich, uh, but you've still, man you've still managed to do a great job with, uh, you know, with the pandemic bringing about a lockdown. I want to pick your brains, your, your introductory remarks on how do you think this pandemic has played into your professional life? Uh, that was a very kind way of putting it, that the diaspora here is not rich. It is, it is actually non-existent. There are barely a hundred Indians in the entire country. Um, and uh, as such, we've always had to struggle with, you know, how to project Indian culture because there's absolutely no support um, no sort of sponsorship or anything that we get from the very tiny community that we have here. So we have in any case, right from the beginning, been used to working things out on our own in, a, in as innovative a way as possible. And online promotion of Indian culture has been a thing with us right from the beginning. So even today, uh, if you go on our website, you'll see that we are doing a lot of stuff, not just on our website, but on our social media. So we are like, um, and we are, we are using the material that is already available on the ICCR's website, for example, 
we take little clips from there, put it on our face, Facebook, say this is what Indian culture is about. And uh, fortunately for us, because of the links with the Soviet Union, the uh, public in general here is very, very fond of India. So anything to do with India becomes a big issue. So for example, just to give you one little um, uh, thing, uh, for this, uh, the um, yoga day uh, this year, for the International Yoga Day, of course, everybody had to do it online this time. But the kind of response we got and the kind of innovative ideas we had, our video was actually shared on the NEA um, uh, website as well. So, you know, like suddenly you find that thousands of people are looking uh, at, at the video, they are trying to join, trying to figure out more about what India is about. Uh, because India is synonymous with culture. I think all of us will agree. First thing that comes to anybody's mind when they are thinking about India is, is, is its culture. So from that point of view, um, probably for India, it is going to be easier, I think, to preserve a cultural heritage and to pass it on than maybe for many other countries. For example, here, where they don't have much, which is very specifically Belarusian. So they are struggling to find ways and means of preserving their language, their culture, their dance, their music. They have very little. But for us, we have this whole, um, should I say a treasure box of things that we can share. And um, I think if used innovatively in ways um, that, you know, like more and more people are thinking about, for example, through storytelling or through vlogs or whatever, I think that is the way to go. And that is something that um, I think with an organization like ICCR backing all of us, all the embassies um, uh, around the world, I think we can do that very well indeed. Thank you, Sangeeta. I want to go on to Meera now. Uh, Mira, you set up Munch UK uh, recently, and uh, that's been going on for about three, four, three months now. Is that is that right? So you have you have firsthand experience on how to set up these things, and I want you to talk a bit more about uh, you know what your experiences were from that. Mira, you're on mute. So if you unmute yourself, thank you. Well, before sort of talking about Munch, I was looking at this hugely prestigious panel and this opportunity to be on this panel and talking about the cultural diplomacy of India and um, and the rest of the world. Um, I was thinking that there are sort of really three aspects of this whole conversation. Um, and my observation is that um, the cultural diplomacy of India uh, is, it cannot be a straight jacket. Um, as our relations with different countries differ, we are possibly talking about several solutions here. The second sort of really aspect of this conversation is about the artist and the arts industry, which Mr. Patnaik has talked about, um, who are the carriers and a bridge between the political and diplomatic ambitions, economic ambitions of the cultural diplomacy. They are struggling. Um, and then the third aspect of this conversation is the creative life of Britain and British Indians um, and the diplomacy between two countries where there is a huge history which we are sharing. And uh, Bridge India is a British uh, setup and four of us are in Britain and other two are um, also have been connected. So I think there are three aspects which I would like to sort of really um, see us talking about. Um, but yes, Munch is something which I set up about three months ago, just out of sheer desperation to connect with people and listen to people because um, in March, nothing was happening. And I just had an idea, uh, connected with a few people on social media, half of them ridiculed me, another half came on board and said, oh, that's a great idea. So we set up Munch and it's just taken off. It's taken off, it's, it's, it's become one of the most sort of talked about platforms um, worldwide because we were, I was doing it only for the artist community of Britain. And just for a month, um, we picked up 34 stories. Um, and those, um, it's going on. This week, you know, we have theaters. We have Jatinder Varma uh, and Sudha Bushir appearing and talking to each other. So it becomes a huge archive of the life uh, during COVID in Britain. And, you know, it's been amazing. Um, experience for us and it's going on and it is it's spreading and I've approached a lot of people. Uh, I hope Arunima will also appear very soon on it. Uh, um, and um, 
it is it is um, it it's it's a success story in a very short period thank you meera um i want to quickly go to amish now and uh, amish you've been sent by the indian government to britain to uh, you know for cultural diplomacy for cultural better cultural outreach <laughs> yes that's what i wanted to ask you uh, has the timing how has the timing played into this entire thing you know there's a uh, there's a chinese uh, curse actually uh, mm -hmm. that uh, may you be born in exciting times it's a little ironic that it's chinese uh, and it's seen as a curse and a blessing Uh, because essentially what is ex what is an exciting time when the board is shaken up all the pieces are thrown up in the air and you don't know how things will land and you have to somehow figure things out so that's 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 the kind of time we are stuck in uh physical events the way things are going uh you know obviously the last few months have been a washout i speak to directors of other cultural centers around here people don't see things opening for the next 5 6 months at least if not more if there's a second wave you know hopefully that will not happen if there is it may get even longer so therefore we as dinesh ji and sangeeta ji were uh, saying rightly we've all been forced to move online veera ji also mentioned that and the way i see it there is uh, you know like in any new move there is a downside and an upside okay the downside of obviously uh, you know especially in the area of performing arts and fine arts nothing compares with actual uh, physical interaction right discussions there yeah, may be you don't lose that much online when performing arts and fine arts yes you do lose uh, a bit of it uh, there's nothing you can do about it right uh, but there's an upside to moving uh, onto the online space as well you know so for example uh, you know uh, we have moved many nehru center events uh, online and uh, you know on zoom obviously we end up getting uh, some 100 150 uh, people for our events but we broadcast it on uh, facebook as well and uh, you know we are getting viewerships of a few thousands our top events we are getting 10 12000 views viewers you know so this uh, we are reaching out to a far bigger audience than we could have ever you know on the physical space more importantly one of the things uh, that i uh, that i received as 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 feedback and dinesh had also said that that most of our activities were restricted too much to london and we are not the cultural the indian cultural center just for london we are the cultural center for the uk now because we are online we are getting uh, audiences uh, from midlands from scotland from northern ireland you know so our entire footprint has expanded so there's a positive uh, as well there are challenges <clears throat> of course you know so my the existing team that we have is geared more towards physical events uh, you know uh, the infrastructure is geared towards physical events there's almost a fresh retraining that as well the mindset that you need to have to be on the online space is uh, is different the mindset with which you need to communicate on facebook twitter instagram is fundamentally different uh, you always have to be conscious of what the camera angles look like right uh, which is you don't think as much when you're when you're doing it on a on a physical uh, space uh, but like i said it has grown our, our twitter the nehru center twitter following was just some 50 60 seven eight months back now we have a verified account and it's more than 1000 already you know uh, our facebook following has uh, grown to some 8 and a half 9000 that's also verified uh, so i i'm one of those you know the indian attitude yeah that always look at the silver lining you know uh, there's no point complaining rone done se kuch nahi hone wala hai we are stuck in this situation so what can we what best can be done out of uh, out of this that's the way to approach it that's the way i see it thank you amish arun ma i'm coming to you now um you are you're an artist you you will have a totally different perspective uh because you know when we went into lockdown you probably saw yourself having to reinvent uh, not as an artist but as the, the strategy of how you uh, you know teach your art tell us about that and what did you learn uh, so you know i'm i'm working on the ground as an artist i'm a freelancer i also run an organization so if i rewind to 13th of march we had a big work, kids workshop which was sold out at sachi gallery and you know on 13th of march i had to decide whether to go ahead or to cancel and the unanimous decision was to cancel uh you know being a former banker i always plan my life meera knows that i used to go to her office at, in january planning for next 6 months and then july planning for next 6 months uh 
all that planning went out the window because you know performance after performance which you know for an in an artist life takes years to build you know years of credibility years of branding years of hard work you know you create a team and then you kind of pitch for performances and then you start to get that all of them out of the window you know we can, we got cancellations from everyone you know my world started to shatter and i was completely devastated now i do, i run I, i'm a freelancer so i don't you know have a job this is my job and uh, i was completely devastated uh, i for the first time in so many years i questioned my decision uh, you know being an artist i felt totally redundant in society and you know i questioned my role so it was a very very dark hour for me uh personally and even for my team because i felt very guilty i couldn't support them there was no income stream there was nothing to look forward to uh slowly we st- you know i started to think about it and as amish ji said you know uh being an economist i said okay let's maximize subject to constraints let's start looking at what is possible uh, i had the benefit of teaching online you know internet to my international centers in brazil and poland so it was you know a, a possible move or a transition to an online platform but the parents of children who used to take those classes were quite apprehensive because you know this was the first time we're dealing with zoom there were login issues the screens didn't work the children didn't understand and so those were harsh realities but i said let's continue and because of home schooling everybody was forced into this you know everybody was more open to this and i think it just you know transitioned seamlessly so i think the classes uh, the you know the whole model of online teaching kind of really helped me uh, because it helped me Uh, you know feel that i i could contribute and slowly many doors opened you know so in terms of portfolio of the work not just you know working with children but working with elderly working with homes working with you know people with learning disabilities there was a whole new canvas and bit by bit you know this blank sheet of paper started to kind of you know come together uh, and we had you know many many uh, new opportunities that i would have never thought about uh, you know the reach each you know session we had whether it was a talk or whether it was a yoga session uh, you know it just reached out to so many more people and people you know globally started to contact uh me and i would have never had that uh uh you know reach or even the thirst or the hunger for that reach if i was not forced into this situation so uh you know today i can look back and say it has opened many new doors i think for me as an artist it has also shown me a very positive humanitarian role i can play in society because of the physical and mental wellbeing that we could work towards you know with children you know stuck at home not being able to play outside dealing with so much anxiety if we do yoga we do dance you know they just completely come alive we you know i used to ask them to dress up and of course you know most of us you know were in our pajamas but like today you know if you dress up you feel good so there were lots of aspects in terms of the role that you know an artist could play and of course there's there's been a you know complete takeover by artists online and i would you know just to finish this point say that you know without art the crudeness of reality would make the world unbearable and it is so true in this time of covid because if we didn't get to watch tv or if we didn't get to listen to wonderful music you know from our iphones or devices uh, or audio books you know all of that is our culture and i think india's right. culture is so rich that it has allowed me to actually you know reach out in many many ways and support myself thank you arunima that's great uh, those are really interesting comments i want to delve into um, the life of an artist now because i think that's an interesting point that's come out of um, every panelist here um we you know it's great that we are able to reach out to many people it's great that we are getting followers but how, what about does this pay does this pay everyone's bills is this is this sustainable it's great that we are able to reach out but then this is not something that uh, you know we we sitting here might think that this is great we are getting followers we are reaching out to a bigger audience across the globe but i want to talk about artists on the ground uh, who in a normal situation would uh, be you know would be earning their livelihood by performing at many places by going for concerts by going for exchange programs which is not happening now and we don't know when it will start to happen uh, if there is a vaccine by the end of the year then things will go back to normal if not then we are in this lockdown for or not lockdown in the socially distant atmosphere for a very long time one second this is also not something like this is not like a pandemic 
uh, of once in a century kind. It could come back. I mean, there is already a new swine flu lurking behind this uh, coronavirus. So this probably means that we have to be better prepared for more times to come. If another pandemic comes in two years later, what do we do? So I want to pick your brains and the question is open to the floor now. Um, how can government agencies like ICCR, Indian government, and artists together and private uh, players like Academy uh, that Mira was heading come together to support those artists and what can be done to ensure that, you know, they still, they are still in business. Um, and, you know, we are, we, while we are reaching out to a bigger audience, we are also taking care of the artists on the ground. So the question is open to the floor. Um, who would like to jump in first? Well, I'll go. Then okay. No, let's, let's be very clear about one thing. Historically, it's always been the emperor or the king or the big business houses or the rich people who have supported arts and culture. <laughs> happened throughout history. Now the emperors and the kings have been replaced by the state and the big business houses still support to a large extent. It's basically the moneyed people who have to support arts and culture. Art and culture came about because it was an activity which you could do only when you had money or leisure. It was only in a prosperous economy that art and culture thrived. Empires which did well was when art and culture thrived. So the same situation happens now. So now if you need to keep it alive, if you need art and culture to do well. So both the state and the people who have money have to work together. Essentially, an artist doesn't need a handout. What he needs is to be able to perform, to be able to do what he loves best, he or she loves best. So we have to create a situation where the artist is able to express herself or himself in the form that he or she loves to an audience across the world and earn some money out of it. You know, so if you can do that, so what do you do? Now, you can't drag people to audiences, but the world has changed. Today, art and culture, instead of coming to a place to watch at art and culture, you can take art and culture to people's homes. The OTT platform has shown you that people watch, want to watch art and culture at their leisure, when they want it. They don't want to say that six o'clock I have to reach the movie theater or seven o'clock I have to reach the opera to watch it. I want to watch at 11 o'clock at night when I finished everything, I want to watch something. I want to get up in the morning. So we need to reach it out in the best possible manner, in the highest quality possible to the people in their homes in a manner in which it is digestible by them. So essentially something which they can understand, something which they can relate to. So you will have to put together a platform. And that is one of the few things which we are working on ICCR. And we are also talking with other agencies across the world to see how we can do it all together. Learn from the best practices of everybody, which means that put in an online platform which replicates to a large extent what you were doing offline. And like Amish said, and we've been talking about it for quite some time, you can actually reach a far wider audience. And you have to do the entire gamu from online to VOD, which is video on demand. So you go online, you do the live performances and the recording of that performance is also available for you to watch when you want to watch it, if you have missed it out. So like and the Netflix model in a way. It's, it's the OTT model. It's a Netflix yeah, model. It's the OTT model. Yeah. It's a model which is there for people to be able to, to get into people's houses. Now, how do you get into people's houses? One is of course their iPhone, iPad, but also TV. People have forgotten that TV was the original medium through which people got culture in their homes. So, do, I mean, if you remember the days when we were growing up, Doordarshan was the only TV channel there and 8 o'clock Chitrahar and 9 o'clock Star Trek and God knows what. I mean, we got our culture from there. And of course, they yeah. used to always elevate the classical arts to 11 o'clock at night, which is, I felt always uh, awful about that because I remember all the classical music and dance used to be at 11 o'clock at night when most people went to sleep. So, the mo whole point right. is we have to reinvent it. So, what we are planning to do in terms of that in ICCR is to have a platform where we can have regular shows every week. So we fix three times, four times a week, which you have regular shows. You also become a platform where people who have their own uh, performances can also come and put in their performances, recorded performances. So we have to do the recording of the people in a high quality, four camera, use VFX, use all the uh, latest technologies to give you a spectacle view rather than a view which is of the general dance form. To bring a sure. spectacle, take it to people's houses, yeah. find out, then do the analytics to see what they like, let the artist yeah. from it. And this, what it does is, once you do that, the amount of money that I used to pay for artists to go across the world, 
Now I pay them. So, okay. You, so you are killing two birds or three birds or I don't know how many birds with one stone. But essentially, right. helping the artist, helping yourselves, doing good for everybody and bringing culture to homes. So now, what we need to do also for Indian art, which we haven't done online for Lashem, is to teach people about Indian art and culture, which is go down to basics, have videos on basics, on the alphabets of dance and music, which is start doing videos, lecture, lecture demonstrations for people to understand what is it about Indian, what is Bharat Natya, what are the mudras in Bharat Natya, what are the um, uh, forms of uh, music, what is khayal, what is, uh, uh, you know, Hindustani, Carnatic classical. So basically bring it out in short versions. So take out knowledge capsules on Indian culture, which people That's can- That's very interesting. Uh, that's very interesting, Dinesh. I'm going to stop you there because I want to bring in Meera here. Um, it's, it's great that you, you're doing that. Um, and it's amazing that this information is available worldwide um, on people's uh, you know, laptops and uh, iPhones and TVs. But does this also mean that if there is a lot of information like this available, then people will stop subscribing or paying for uh, you know, more, more artists or more platforms because there's free information available um, out there. Um, and Mira, I want, to, I want to bring you in and I want to get your views on that. Mira, you're on mute, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Um, I think the issue is about art, Indian artists in India and Indian artists outside India. So we're talking about have and have nots here. And there is a, there's, there's a wide gap between those two worlds here. Um, I live in London, so I'm far more connected to the artists here, but I'm quite aware of the ones who are struggling uh, in India. Um, so the question was about the artist here. So in, uh, in my part of the world, artists, you know, the day lockdown happens, somehow within sort of two or three days, artists sort of really, you know, um, they sorted themselves out on Zoom. They, um, you know, most of the kind of really um, uh, artists who are engaged in music and dance are also teaching. So they somehow continue to sort of go online and carry on teaching. There was a very small drop out of the students uh, online. Most of the classes are going on actually in this part of the world. So they are able to feed themselves and they are able to sustain. Uh, yes, um, the, state uh, the state government and especially English government has been sort of really kind and generous. They have invested about 20 million pounds now in helping out the artists. So. Um, they invited artists to apply and everybody got a grant. Um, you know, Arunima's company also got a grant to sustain the creative work uh, and many more of us got um, that support uh, uh, from individual artists to the companies. So that was one thing which sort of really hasn't happened um, uh, outside India. We are only uh, outside this country. We are only talking about kind of getting food handouts. Um, uh, and yesterday's uh, Prime Minister's uh, announcement was again about food packages which will go to people. So yes, you can eat, but then creativity, how does creativity survive? Anyway, in our part of the world, there is a very small concept of uh, commissioning. We don't commission. So um, you may have a platform and you may invite somebody to come and create a piece. But then you expect this, create, uh, this dance performance or music performance or um, uh, a painting exhibition or a piece of writing, everything to be done by the individuals in their own time with their own investment. So therefore, these artists are expected to do something else to pay their bills and to feed themselves. So where do we professionalize the art form? You know, and how do we professionalize uh, the sector uh, back home? Because it eventually impacts um, um, all the tours, you know, when, when, when Indian artists sort of arrive to perform in UK and I have dealt with them for last sort of at least 35 years, you are struggling to kind of, you know, give them a professional look to, to, to professionalize their performance because they have somehow kind of worked very hard um, within a rural, rural context, within a kind of really um, a context of deprivation and pride and you know uh, limitations and they turn up and they are expected to kind of you know um, face uh, Royal Opera House and 
the ballerinas, you know, of the, of the professional world and they are compared. So we need to kind of really look at consolidation. I and mean, this is the best time, you know, I, th I think until sort of India gets 75th year, we have three years to kind of really consolidate, plan, look at the need of um, um, the sector internally and externally and create a, a professional, you know, um, presence. So, sure. yeah. That's great. Um, I want to, um, you know, bring in Sangeeta and Amish here because um, to Nehru Center, the, not, the model that Nehru Center has always been, and, you know, it's about having uh, events in the evenings. You have a plan that for the rest of the year, you know, the idea is to meet and have, have a nice glass of, glass of wine, cheese. It's always about networking, meeting people, uh, you know, listening and uh, in, uh, attending these events. However, is it, it's, it's probably like a ghost town right now, if I'm not mistaken, because there are no people coming in. But you guys are, I mean, I mean, at Nehru Center, you are continuing to have events uh, that people can watch. And Sangeeta, uh, in Belarus, you've been doing a lot of online events. Do you see this, uh, how do you see this going back to normal? I mean, when you think about next year, when you start to plan about what events you'll have in 2021, what, do you have any certainty in your mind? Do you have any plan of action in terms of how do you want to see this going? Um, I mean, happy to start with Sangeeta and then go on to Amish after that. Um, well, uh, Spriha, here in Belarus, we are in a very different um, position, really, as uh, compared to maybe the Nehru Center and others, because as you probably probably know, this is one country which did not go down for, go for a formal lockdown. So as a result, um, it's um, a lot of things are still sort of happening not in so much of a public uh, kind of a thing, but you know, you, you can still step out and you can have outdoor performances and things like that. There's no ban on that. So in that sense, uh, we are of the opinion that, you know, once this, um, the, uh, uh, towards the end of this year, I feel personally that we might be able to go back to a more regular kind of a, an output on the cultural front. In the meanwhile, um, we, of course, we are constrained uh, with the fact that, you know, we cannot as an embassy invite, because we were allowing a lot of um, people, you know, like, uh, as I said, the diaspora here is very small, but the local people, the local um, artists, there's so many of them who practice Indian, you know, they, 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 some of them have been trained by ICCR, then they come back here and they open their own dance schools and music schools and, um, you know, various things. So they, of course, at the moment, they're suffering a lot because earlier we used to provide them with a place where they can hold these classes. They, they used to come to the embassy and they, you know, they used our premises and all. That is not happening anymore. And I don't know when. I don't think before September or so we'll be able to, uh, to start on that again. Um, but uh, the fact is that because of the peculiar situation of Belarus, I think we are in a better situation. We might be able to start earlier. In the meanwhile, um, as Dinesh was in fact mentioning, um, you know, like, uh, in fact, it's so, so eerie because just yesterday I had come up with the same idea without having spoken to, uh, to Dinesh. And uh, we were thinking that we will do that. We'll pick up, you know, maybe video clips from ICCR's website, from other places, free material, which is available. Start, uh, you know, putting it out on our social media because suddenly after this last International Day of Yoga, we have about 8,000, 10,000 people looking at our at our uh, Facebook and things. So we thought we might be able to do something like that, uh, you know, do little bits of introduction to various art forms, to, you know, uh, modern artists with the history of, um, of various, uh, you know, art, uh, art uh, um, traditions, uh, should we say. Uh, so that is something that we definitely want to keep going. And in the meanwhile, we are also asking the Belarusian artists who've been performing for us, who are very familiar with, uh, you know, with our, our dances, our music, yoga, and things. They're all sending in little clips of their performances, talking about their experiences, talking about how they feel about Indian, you know, culture, Indian dance forms, music, whatever else they've been exposed to. So that we keep the tradition alive. We attract more and more people uh, to, um, to, to, to familiarize themselves with what India is all about and therefore keep this whole thing going. So um, I think that is, that is going to be my contribution while I'm here in Belarus. Let's see how it happens. Yeah. Okay, um, Amish, on to you now. Um, you know, honestly, I think one of the pleasures of working with Dinesh Ji is that he thinks often like a media company CEO rather than a bureaucrat. <laughs> uh, 
it and does uh, and no and and that is a real benefit in this present scenario one of the things that we have to realize is especially those who have been who have successful legacy models right uh, those legacy models chances are chances are it's not coming back right and if you've had a successful legacy model you know you tend to get emotional about it you don't want to you know rethink and start from uh, you know that if it doesn't come back what am i going to do right uh, and i think many of the things uh, dinesh ji touched on already you know because online has expanded dramatically people who are never online are online now uh, yes it hurts many of the legacy models but it opens new opportunities uh, as well uh, 5g is going to expand at most at most places that suddenly makes so much of your it services far more efficient you can do so much more uh, online what uh, dinesh ji spoke uh, spoke of of the ott uh, model uh, i think many of us in the cultural space have to figure out how to do it and figure out how to make revenue out of it right uh, because yes it is true that many uh, uh, you know many viewers on the online space are used to not paying but you also have to realize that on the online space for the producers the costs are a lot lower right so uh, so if if for example if nehru center has to uh, has to get a troop over from india you know if there are some 10 people you know you count in travel count in, count in you know boarding lodging everything put together you know what is my budget on that i don't have to spend anything of that right now so therefore it's not that i have to justify that much expenditure i can justify this this much expenditure and have more money left over to give to the artist so it's an entirely new model we have to think differently and the reality is at this point in time many of us we, we are we have to be open to experimenting with stuff at this point in time because no one is sure what the exact model will be that will emerge you know uh, there is a thing you know i have, I have a lot of friends uh, through my books uh, circle uh, because you know many of my readers are in the bay area uh, you know and in uh, tech companies senior guys in tech companies so one gets a lot of ideas on what are the things going on out there and vr is not so much science fiction anymore it's a matter of time it's going to come quickly and a lot of it is not so much the technology of virtual reality it is the the bandwidth availability and bandwidth availability right. is improving dramatically right so you can do so many uh, things on virtual reality now which can again make the experience richer for you at your home uh, dinesh ji spoke very rightly of tv many of the new tvs that are being sold are smart tvs they have internet built in right which means again it opens up a model for what we can do right uh, sure. so we have to think out of the box no one is sure what the exact model will be but i'll just end with a with an interesting experiment i did off in harvard business review this was a very famous experiment a few decades ago okay they had uh, in a dark room they put two bottles with black paper all around it with light shining dinesh ji smiling so he's heard of that uh, with light shining at the bottom of the of the uh, of the bottle okay now bees are among the most intelligent insects around they actually have a communication system through dance etc in one of the bottles they let in bees in another bottle they let in flies right bees being intelligent thought okay the exit from the bottle will be where the light is they went to the bottom of the glass where the light was shining and obviously there was glass out there they couldn't get out and they just kept they just waited out there they didn't move right. flies on the other hand went to where the light was they realized it wasn't working then they hit somewhere else then they hit somewhere else then they hit somewhere else within a few minutes all the flies were out it might sound intra dick but many of us have to develop the attitude of flies right now we have to experiment because no one is sure what model will work it will emerge in a year or two let's experiment thank you, try out new things thank you i'm going to move to i'm going to go to arunima before we open for q and a so arunima final point from you Uh, there are a few dimensions to what has just been said i completely agree with them but you know i think the best part about this situation is that art has been a leveler so anybody who has an access to a phone or a device and you know you're an artist you cook food you do yoga you do aerobics you can just put yourself out there so you know in that sense it you know you don't need to be uh, you know a guru or anybody you know to be invited to perform you can just you know you be a facebook streaming live so you can just do that for yourself so in that sense it has been a leveler now because it has been a leveler and there's so much information i think for people to start earning out of it has become 
uh, a problem. So in order to make it sustainable, it is really important that you professionalize yourself and whatever content you put out there, you know, it, it, it becomes, you know, you are the brand ambassador for that and not just a brand ambassador for your content, but also a brand ambassador for your culture. So if you're going to put, you know, half-baked content uh, and, and, you know, somebody in Russia is watching you and it's not good enough, they think that's what is Indian. So I have a problem, you know, in terms of monitoring the quality which is going out there also putting it out free and I, I ask a lot of dancers why are you putting your stuff for free and every day getting dressed and putting this you know once in a while it's okay and you know dancers or artists are facing an attention deficit because they're not doing anything this is their you know so I think you know uh, uh, lots of kind of important things need to be thought through Nita yeah. spoke about professionalization that is what will be required to retrain you know artists to think of themselves as a profession both on on the demand side and the supply side so if you are supplying material you need to supply professional material and if you are taking that material you need to set aside some guidelines and then take that material now for example we i did a session for bhavan the first session was free where we did an online class you know uh, 15000 people joined in but after that if you come to my class you pay for my class so over the last few months 200 sessions you know we have done uh, through our program called ekatra which is dance for all uh, but out of this at least 70% you know have been paid it's subsidized it's not the same because i'm not hiring a studio to train you i'm not face to face with you but i am still teaching you and yeah. so you know for getting that from me then uh, you know you you must be you know able to pay and therefore the quality and the content i provide has to be of a certain quality and the last point is that because we're not doing physical tourism you know the the tourism industry obviously you know people are not traveling here and there i think culture tourism you know, is is key today. You know, we can spend on culture tourism because from this room, I can give you access to my culture, you know, an ancient tradition of Kuchipuri written years ago. But I need to, you know, obviously make, make it as immersive as, as possible. And we've had wonderful tie-ups with travel companies uh, who are doing these immersive, uh, you know, experiences. That is another avenue for the government to, like you rightly said, you know, create these heritage packs or create these immersive experiences, but then again ensure that what you're packaging, you know, is relevant yeah. and is accessible to the world. Very, very well said, Arunima, uh, and thank you. Um, we're going to open for question and answers now. Dinesh, sorry, uh, you're on mute. No, no, no. One thing I just wanted to bring in because yeah. both Nima and Arunima are saying exactly what I wanted them to say, which is wonderful, is that we need to professionalize. But right. To understand one thing, the new professional will not be in the old industry. The new professional will be in the online industry. Right. So the new professional will have to learn how to be a professional in the online industry to be able to make money out of the online industry. The way right. the new the professional did it in the offline industry. That's yeah. all. Okay, that's great. Uh, sorry, yes, go to add one point to what both Dinesh and uh, Arunima has have said. Um, you know, in a crisis like this, when the economy is going down, I think one of the first uh, things that to be hit is the culture, the culture industry, so to yeah. say, because for everyone, it becomes the last priority. As Meera was saying, like food packages are far, far more important than, uh, than cultural um, um, performances or whatever. Yeah. So what I have been uh, also hearing from a lot of my artist friends, because, you know, so many years in ICCR and at the Nehru Center, most of my friends are now from the artist community. And many of them have been telling me how they're not now being very uh, blackmailed in a very civilized way, so to say, by people telling them, organizers telling them that you, in any case, you're not doing anything. So, you know, why don't you come and perform free for me or at a yeah. very, very discounted price? So that is something that we need to teach the public that right. this is something if you want it, you'd better learn to pay for it. You know, this is not going to come free for you. So how that education of the public is going to happen is something that people like Dinesh will have to figure out and work out a way in which not just the government is supporting the artists, but people are being made to pay for what they watch. So cultural con con content has to become at some stage a payable um, option. That's Very well said. Yes, that's that's absolutely correct. Well, we're going to open to Q and question and answers now. Um, but before that, I said earlier on in the um, 
panel that, you know, this topic is very close to my heart, uh, which is very true. Um, I cannot take any credit for uh, hosting this panel because the brainchild of this, uh, uh, you know, panel, the idea behind uh, hosting this um, came from a person called Rajesh Kumar Srivastav, who um, was a former deputy director of the Nehru Center, worked at ICCR for about 38 years. He got in touch with Bridge India and he suggested the panel and the name of panelists. So all, all the people in this panel were suggested by him. He also happens to be my father um, and he, he's right here. He wants to ask a question to the panel and after that, we'll, I'll take questions from the rest of the panel. So um, go on, there you go. Thank you very much, everyone. It was a fantastic, I would say, uh, a discussion by the people who are really carrying the ethos of Indian diplomacy and culture. I was, I've been watching this online program for the last three, four months. Started with Manchu K, Miraji, then the ICCR, different exhibitions, paintings, Nehru Center having some programs, Sangeeta Ji writing about, with no diaspora, how she is managing the interest of Indian culture. But I have got one question which I was thinking, especially working in in ICCR for 38 years. And this question I ask on behalf of all the retired employees of ICCR. You know, during our working days, there were certain terms which were like a gospel for us. Cultural exchange program, plan of action, international students, outgoing and incoming visitors. I mean, all of us were busy throughout the year about all this planning out these things. Now what is going to be the state of action there in ICCR. I mean, I remember, Sangeeta ji would remember for the Tagore's 150th anniversary, two years in advance, we had started working and what a fantastic festival we had. Similarly, so many activities. Uh, mm, Director Nehru Center would remember making out plan of actions, plan of activities for last two, three months, getting approved from the High Commission and then doing it. What are we doing now? Just wanted for my query. Thank you. Sorry, there I am Good. back again. Let's hear that. You, oh, do, should I call him? All right, come on in. Um, all right, go on. Um, Mr. Patnaik, would you like to start? Well, it, it's very clear. See, right now you've been given a chance to plan, which you didn't have before. Because half the time, even if you say you're making a plan of action, you're doing this, everything was last moment. And somewhere you have to pause, take stock and decide what you're going to do next. And this has given you a chance to pause and to go into a realm where you can actually reach out to more people. But most important that more than that is prioritizing. Sometimes you do a whole lot of things, which you do because you're supposed to do a lot of things. But when you have to prioritize, then you realize which are the essential things that you need to do. What are the important things that you need to put in place? Because everybody forgets, ICCR is not about culture. ICCR is about cultural diplomacy. It's something which your people forget a lot. It is not about taking culture. Culture will be taken care by somebody else. My job is to make sure that the person on the other side understands what is Indian culture, feels that Indians are cultured people, has a good impression about India, and that is the advantage that I need. I want him to have a good impression about me so that when he has to choose between me and some other country, he feels I'm a more civilized person than the other. And so I come from a more cultured background that I'm, I've got human traits. I've got uh, capabilities which are different from others. So that is what my purpose is. For that, I need a vibrant culture in my own country, which I can then take abroad. So for me, there are two aspects of it. One is to make the vibrant culture in my own country not die down, to have a vibrant culture, to use the diaspora abroad to keep that vibrant culture alive there, and then take it to the non-diaspora community, which is my target. My target is not the diaspora community. Yes. Diaspora community is my medium to reach the non-diaspora community. That's a very interesting point. Very interesting. And, yeah, very important. Yes. So right now, what we are doing is we are realizing that a lot of activities ICCR used to do was unfructious. There was no point of doing such activity. There are a lot of activities which we should have done much better than what we were doing in the past. So right now, we are focusing on where all we need to do, what all we need to do, which is our priority areas. Where do I get more bang for the buck? Because the buck is going to go down. 
my budgets are going to get cut. So where do I get more bang for the buck? Where do I be able to embed my culture into other systems? How do I leverage? There's a lot of money available despite, you see, you have to understand one thing, this pandemic has created an economic problem, but it has not had destruction of assets. So basically what has happened is your money is there. Your flow has stopped. So the flow has stopped, but the money is still there. The stock is there. So some, there are people there who are willing to use the stock. There are people who are willing to do it and you have to leverage yourselves. So I will come back again to the point which both Meera Arunama made and Sangeeta also said is our artist community needs to professionalize themselves to an extent where they become professionals online and are able to impress people enough for people to come and pay to see them. You know, that's the way we have to go. Now, how do we do that? They are not going to learn on themselves. So I have to not train them, give them a medium, put incentives for them to do it so that give them a helping hand to become that professional that they deserve to be. So if you look at TikTok, even though TikTok is banned from today, <laughs> look at TikTok, the biggest stars in TikTok are not the movie and TV stars. They're ordinary yeah, individuals. Right. Yeah. They did something right. Why is people with talent not able to do that something right to shine more than them? So and I think, I think that's, that's sorry, sorry, um, um, Dinesh, to stop you there because we've got like three minutes and I want to go to every panelist now for their closing remarks before, um, you know, I can hand over to uh, Bridge India for their, um, they've got a poll that's been going on. So it'll be interesting to know what the results of the poll is. But I want to go to every panelist now and, you know, have like 30 seconds for opening, for your closing remarks. So I want to start with Arunima because you're right uh, at the top of my screen. So Arunima, if you start and then we'll go to Amish, Sangeeta, uh, Meera and Dinesh, finally to you. So art has been a leveler. This is a, you know, a, a difficult situation, but I would request all artists to create, uh, you know, good content, feel that they are the brand ambassadors and cultural ambassadors of India and the government, whether it's Indian government or, you know, UK government, any government to really come up and support artists because it is arts that is kind of helping us, you know, uh, seamlessly move through this situation. Of course, you know, the necessities are important, but I think art, it has been the core uh, for physical and mental well-being uh, in this pandemic. Amish, over to you. I, I think the key thing to realize, uh, which many in the old legacy models have not, there is a lot of money to be made online. There are people like Prajakta Kohli, people like Ranveer Arora, people you won't have heard of at all, who are making crores every year from India. Okay? Uh, and they're not doing some random nonsense on YouTube. They have podcasts, they have discussions. The model is available, but it's a completely different model, completely different way of thinking. I'm an author. I haven't stopped releasing my books. I just released a book uh, a week back. And the way we are marketing it, the way we are selling it is completely different. And it's selling at the same pace as my previous book. The model, you have to just think differently. It is a completely different model. And for those who think it may go back to the old legacy, no, I, I suspect that's not going to happen. People's habits themselves it itself will change. So we have to, even artists have to think of new models. Or those who manage the artists have to help them develop into a new model where they can make money out of it. People can make money. It does happen online. Perfect. Sangeeta, over to you. Just two points. Uh, one, um, you know, as Amish and uh, also Arun Arunima and uh, Dinesh, everybody has said, uh, this online uh, propagation of culture now has to become a part of our lives. We have to learn how to do it. For example, so many of, you know, the world's museums went online, as you know, in the last few months. And they, uh, you know, you could have a virtual tour of the museum. So something like that, if we can devise for artists, for what they're doing, for their performances, et cetera, that would be, um, you know, something very, uh, very important. And the second point is that um, uh, Dinesh was talking about TikTok. Uh, and it is true that just about everybody in the world now thinks they are artists and they can do whatever and, you know, like people watch them or whatever, maybe no longer in India, but in other parts of the world. So we have to somehow come um, sort of, I feel that that is a kind of a, um, you know, a lowering of the, of the bar, so to say. So how to distinguish real artists from people who think they're artists and who are actually, a lot of them are just making a fool of themselves. So how to... Uh, <laughs> real talent, real um, excellence in terms of this new world of, you know, everybody being an artist and everybody being an, uh, a, a viewer. So how do you distinguish between the two? 
And how do we ensure that artists are actually paid for the excellence, for the talent, for the time uh, that they have put into uh, honing their craft? So these are the two things I think we'll really have to think about. That's perfect. Mira, over to you. And then uh, final points from Dinesh. Um, I think it's going to be the new age and we'll need new solutions um, uh, to live with the creativity. Um, I think in India, we have to sort of really uh, remember to look at um, the oral traditions and nurture and um, commission um, artists who are there as, as well as archive them so that we don't lose them in the process of uh, digitization. Looking at the digital literacy of the creative sector, training, um, establishing new, I think, new leaderships. Mental health of the artists is very important. Sustainability of the sector needs to be looked at with the new models, possibly new ideas, new approaches. Um, finding new ways of dissemination, as well as getting polit politicians on board to kind of really, really understand uh, the plight of the artist and um, the challenges of the cultural diplomacy. Um, we also need to kind of really, and I've said this again and again, that I think this is this whole conversation is for culture ministry, not for ICCR, because culture ministry needs to kind of create a base for the excellence uh, of creativity, which yeah. ICCR can take out to the world. Because I see ICCR as a conduit to sort of really sell India to the world rather than kind of be responsible for all that what Mr. Patnaik is being sort of really occasionally for being battled for, which I see online now. Yeah. Um, but I think it's not only Ministry of Culture, but it's um, uh, women, small scale industries, tourism, all the ministries needs to get together to have some kind of a united sort of really um, uh, front, which then makes us proud living outside India. Thank you. Very well said. I'll final points from um, Dinesh and then uh, you're on mute, Dinesh, so I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, just the final point. One is COVID-19 is here to stay. And yes. even if COVID-19 disappears tomorrow, online is here to stay. That is going to be the new mode of going. So we have to go there. We have to create new breed of professionals, new artists who will go online. But the uh, upheaval that is taking place in the art and culture industry is not nothing new. If you remember when movies came, it ended theater. People stopped going to theater because they did movies. Then when TV came, movies suddenly became passe. Then movies came back. When pop culture came, suddenly classical music became passe. People said, oh, pop culture is the one with the money. There's no classical. This upheaval happens all the time. This is the same thing which is going to happen. The professionals in each industry will have to work together to make themselves savable, to make people understand. At the end of the day, no matter how many fast food joints you have in the world, the gourmet joints will always do well. There has to be a place for every kind of culture and the, every kind of culture will exist. For us, it's too important is to make sure that the place for culture, that the state supports this. Like Mira said, the state has to be the most important actor in this whole place, making sure that culture stays surviving and does well. If culture survives in India and does well, ICCR's job is to make sure there's a proper platform for this culture to be taken across the world. I'm very optimistic. I don't see any pessimistic. There's a rainbow and there's a pot of gold at the end of the day. And like Amish said, let's try and get that pot of gold. Thank you. That's great. It's great to have optimism at the end of uh, the event. Um, and, you know, we, I think the, uh, we should be able to uh, get the word out. And I think let, let everyone know what we discussed today, because this is a very interesting conversation. We've got key policymakers, key artists here in this conversation who are actually, um, you know, who, who, who people should be listening to. So I request you all to tweet about this event. I request you all to, um, you know, Facebook, uh, spread the love, spread the word. Um, I think Bridge, Bridge India will be sending out a YouTube link as well. So please feel free to share that. But personally, I really wanted to thank each one of you um, for this session. This has been very, very interesting. Like I said, very different from what I um, normally do in my day in my day to day life. So I'm very happy to be pulled out of the news rush in the morning and host such a brilliant panel. Um, a special thank you also to Mr. Shravasta for actually putting this idea through um, and, uh, you know, sort of 
pushing me to actually uh, host it. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks, Bridge India. And, th and lots of thank you to our uh, listeners and our viewers who've been sending points and sending me messages on the side with your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of that. Uh, but you know, hopefully, we'll have another session in a few months' time. If COVID-19 is here to stay, one line is here to stay, stay, as Dinesh said. So yeah, on that note, thanks again very much. And have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spreya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks very much.